What's good, y'all, man? We are back in with another video, man. Today, I'm here to recap game number four of the NBA Finals. It was a really, really, really good game, man. Um, Steph Curry, what can I say? Um, let's just be honest. Steph Curry, win or lose, best player in the, in the series, and he should win Finals MVP unanimously. I don't know if y'all have realized his numbers, and pretty, I'm pretty sure y'all haven't because I just realized it, but Steph Curry has been averaging 34 points, 6 rebounds, 3.8 assists, 2 steals, shooting 50% from the field, and 49% from the 3. He is legit carrying. He's carrying on some 2015 LeBron stuff. Yes, he has a little bit more help than LeBron, but when it comes to the games and the performances, he is playing exactly how LeBron was playing at that time, man. They were both carrying their teams to wins. They, they should have lost this game. Let's be honest. They should have lost this game. Um, the Celtics got a good game from Rob, Rob Will. They got 16 and three threes from... Uh, my fault. I just dropped my water bottle. From Derek White. Al Horford hit a few threes in the fourth quarter that kind of looked like they were going to sway the game a little bit. Like, they should have won this game. Marcus Smart hit that, game, uh, that three at the end of the shot clock. Then he hit another three after that. They definitely should have won this game. But they couldn't. Because Steph Curry is just... Man, I don't know what Steph Curry's on. But, like, this whole playoff choker, final choker, like, he's he's dead in that argument, that debate. Um, people thought that Luka was better. Luka was better than him. He's deading that, too. A lot of people still might think that. I don't know what basketball y'all are watching. But Steph Curry is the third best player in the world and the best point guard in the world. By far. And to me, he's already top 10, but he's, like, kind of, like, ceiling that he's top 10 of all time. Um, now, over to the Celtics. We'll get back to the Warriors, but over to the Celtics. This is why I've never been a huge fan of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Amazing players. Amazing players. They made strides in their games. Um, Jalen Brown becoming a more consistent scorer. Jason Tatum becoming a more all-around number one option, being a, a decent playmaker and being, being an elite defender. But the reason why I've never been so connected to these guys like everybody else has been is they have to be some of the lowest IQ stars we've had in this league. I'm talking about the shots that they take um, in the situations that they're in. Like, Tatum, they got a steal, and he shot a pull-up three. For what? And they was, only, they was up by two. It was in the second quarter. But, like, yes, the second quarter doesn't really mean that much. But why are you shooting a pull-up three? Top of the shot clock. For what? What are you doing? After you just get a steal, you have numbers. Why are you shooting a pull-up three? Jalen Brown. It seems like Jalen Brown gets stuck in the air all the time because he gets locked up. Then he has to make a pass last second, and he gets stuck in the air. Then he takes dumb shots himself. Them two take the dumbest shots, and then you pair that up with a guy like Marcus Smart, who I like Marcus Smart, but I'm starting to get tired of watching Marcus Smart because on defense, he's on the floor every fucking possession. And then when it comes to the offensive side, he doesn't take smart shots either. And he's he can play the point guard, but he's not really a point guard that can get this team into where they don't have moments like this. They lost this game because they don't know how to play basketball. <laughs> they don't know how to play winning basketball when it comes down to it. They were just shot chucking, shot chucking, shot cut chucking. You take this ISO, you take this ISO, you take this ISO. And that's how they lost this game. If they had a real point guard, they wouldn't have lost this game. Because Marcus Smart could have been able to settle them down, make some plays, not make some plays, but like put people in their right spots to succeed, and they couldn't do that in this end of, the, end of this game, man. And that's why they lost, and that's why I've never been a big fan of Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. Now, that's one of the reasons why I say I'm, t I'm taking Devin Booker over Jason Tatum any day of the week, and I still am. Um, other than that, shout out to Derek White. He has been hoping. Um, Rob Will, I love, I love me some Rob Will, man. Just the energy and the effort that he brings on both sides of the ball. I love Rob Will. Um, but yeah, they lost this game because they're Big three, quote-unquote. Um, yeah, and it, it was terrible. 8 for 24 for Jason Tatum. I'm like, come on now. Jalen Brown, you shot terrible, too. Um, they they should have won this game. They definitely should have won this game. There's no excuse for it. They have to be better. And it's like the same pattern in the last two series. The Bucks, they should have beat the Bucks in five. But they let one man take three games off of them. Same thing with the Heat. They should have beat them in five. Let one man, one man that's... Uh, way worse than the man you just let take three games over you in the last series. They let him take three games against you. You can't do that against this series and against this team. You have to win and be consistent because you can't let a veteran-led team like this 
stay with you because you've seen it this whole game. Maybe they didn't play that good, but if they, they're going to stay on your ass the whole game, and they stayed on their ass the whole game until Seth Curry just decided to do him and take over. Um, Back to the Warriors, Klay Thompson played amazing. Some of the shots in Bonehead, he did the same thing Tatum did, a pull-up three. That shit pissed me off. But I think he played amazing, not because if you look at his stats, he shot like, he shot like 7 for 17 and had 18 points. But he won. He hit the clutch shots. Two, his defense in the second half, completely locked down. Remind me of the old Klay Thompson. I was so hyped watching him. Completely locked down, especially on Jalen Brown's some possessions. And he had a couple steals on Jason Tatum. Completely locked down, so shout out to him. Wiggs. 17 and 15. 17 points with 15 rebounds from Andrew Wiggins. Um, shout out to the Warriors. They turned this kid into a winning player. And it's so fun to watch. It's so fun to watch. Seeing him engaged on both sides of the ball. Seeing him getting the clutch rebounds because they've been getting out rebounded this whole series. Just shout out to him, man. Hitting his shots. Um, he came out hot in the first half, had 11 points. Shout out to him. Off the bench, Bielisa had some good minutes. Gary Pay Jr., first 10 seconds in the game, got a steal. He has some amazing, some amazing minutes. Jordan Poole played really good today. Didn't rush a lot of shots. Didn't take some dumbass, dumbass shots. He took one three that was like <laughs> way behind the three-point line. But I love the shot because it was in the flow of the game. And that's a shot that he usually makes. He played good today. They got contributions from everywhere today. Not what you would want it to be. Some shot very poorly, but they got some decent contribution. Draymond Green, I guess we can address the elephant in the room. As far as stats-wise, you're never going to get what you want from Draymond Green. And if somebody points that out to you, that just shows you their knowledge of basketball. Because like when you look at Draymond Green, you don't, you're not supposed to look at fucking stats. And that's something I never did. But as far as his defense, he played really, really good defense today. And that won't be the narrative that you would get from the internet. I'm just letting you know, he played really good defense. The one thing that blew me with Draymond is he had his head down a lot. The energy, the impact, the leadership was not there tonight. And that's Draymond Green. That's You don't look for Draymond Green for the stats. You look for Draymond Green for the energy, the leadership, all that stuff. It, it, it wasn't there tonight. It wasn't. And as a Draymond Green fan, that disappointed me. But, hey, they ended up winning. I want to see what he says in this podcast, but they ended up winning. Shout out to Steve Kerr for taking him out the game and playing with Jordan Poole. Again, Steve Kerr showing that he has amazing amazing trust in his player. Um, Steph Curry had three fouls in the first half last game with, like, four minutes left. And he left him in, and it impacted him from not getting blown out that game. So, shout out to Steve Kerr. Super underrated coach. But, yeah, this was an amazing game. Um, I kind of still want to say Warriors in six, but like we already know how the Celtics play after a loss, man. So I don't know, but I'm gonna go Warriors in six, man. Other than that, man, that's it for this video. Talk to you guys later. Peace out.